Hi, I'm Emma and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to do a video on the um, adoption process. So if you like my channel, um, please um, subscribe and thank you to everybody who's subscribed so far to our little family and following our adoption journey. Um, please give us a thumbs up and please um, let me know in commenting at the bottom of the video or on my Instagram page, <clears throat> which is um, the Adams Family or the Adams Family of Four. Um, let, know, let us know what you think of my videos and if there's anything you'd like us to share or talk about, um, that, would be, that would be absolutely brilliant. So I've decided to do these um, adoption videos and fostering videos to share our journey with you through our adoption and fostering. Um, we've, ha we've had about six years now experience about this. Um, and we've adopted um, twice now, two beautiful, beautiful little girls who we love so much. Um, we've been on the internet, we've looked on YouTube and stuff, um, and there's not a lot out there specifically for the UK adoption process. So that's why um, we felt we're going to share ours. So the adoption process, <clears throat> um, I'm going to share our experience of it as well. So, again, we first started our adoption process a bit about six years ago. Um, so, the adoption process is broken down into about four stages. Um, and if you look on the government website, it, it says the, um, the stage one and stage two adoption process takes about six months. And for us, that took a bit longer because of my husband's work. He works overseas for, for periods and obviously he's home for periods so um our adoption process slowed right down when he was away um and then we picked things back up when he was home but that was really good for us um because we took it at a slow pace um and the social workers were really good because they obviously recognized that and was able to be flexible um and work with us so um i'm going to talk about stage one and stage two they do blur in a little bit so hopefully I'll make this really clear so um, so once your application form has been accepted and you've been accepted onto it um, there's some adoption preparation classes and we did this through our local um, local authority agencies because we felt that was the, the best the best for us um, I have got another video that tells you about how we got started with our adoption process. So if you have a look at that, that will tell you about that. So we attended some adoption preparation classes. As you know, um, they, they, they run them throughout the year, but obviously at set dates. So um, because of my husband's work, we did some together and some separately. Um, but I felt... I cope with that a lot better than he did actually. Um, I like just going together and learning together and, and, and stuff, but I think because I'm quite independent, we have to be with him working away. Um, I quite like going without him actually, um, meeting the people, sharing things and all that. Um, he did go without me. Um, I don't know if he'd, he'd shared as much as I did on his own, but yes, we, we, we did that. So we met lots and lots of lovely people the first time round and the second time round um, met lots of friends who was in the class with us who were starting their um, adoption journeys or fostering to adopt journeys first time we did our preparation classes we was doing it for adoption and then and then the second time we did it again and um, we was doing it for foster to adopt and also just to um, refresh our memories as well because um, it'd been it'd been a while so um because because ours was over a long period i talk about my experiences from both of them but a lot of it will be based on on our recent experience so our adop adoption preparation classes were set over three days um i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed them and i just made some notes if my eyes keep flipping down and um, that's what i'm referring to just so I, I can tell you a little bit about all the subjects really um so um, they cover a wide range of things because, as it says, it's to prepare you for adoption and prepare you to have um, a, um, a child from, with, with, with that history. So they advise you on the effect that adoption may have on you um, and the child. Um, again, like I've said, you get to know, network with other potential adopters and they've came 
became uh, really good friends. We still connect with them now. Um, you know, meet up with them, and especially in the early days when we first got our children and stuff, we met up with them. Um, and it also, uh, we got, a, for both, both the times we went for preparation classes, we got a WhatsApp group set up. That was absolutely fantastic. So if anybody in your preparation classes is brave enough to set that up, I think that has been the absolute best for us to keep in contact with the others, to see how they're getting on, what progress they've made. And also to support each other and share the ups and downs with each other, because that is one of the things that, that got us through not only the, the, like the pre preparation classes bit, but far beyond that. And we meet up with our children as well, um, because we become such good friends. I think that's nice, because not only are we supporting each other, but our children get to know each other. Um, and then hopefully they'll have somebody else there in the future to help support them with what they're experiencing through the adoption um, journey f for themselves. Um, and he gets to bounce ideas off of each other as well, which is really good. Um, oh, I've lost my place now. Um, so, yeah, you get to meet um, the social workers as well. So sometimes your social worker might take some of the preparation classes or attend some of the, um, attend some of the, the topics, the subjects. And then other times there are other um, social workers obviously taking the classes. But um, they're all very supportive. Um, we found... Don't be afraid to speak up, ask questions, share your ideas and experiences because that's what they're there for. Um, you know, you're there to learn off them, but also um, to, to learn off each other, really. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed asking questions, sharing stuff, but I think that's, that's the kind of person I am anyway. Um, the, the second time we did our preparations classes, obviously we had a few ex um, years under our belts, um, and we was in a we were the only experienced adopters there who were refreshing. The rest of everybody else was um, doing their adoption journey the south the first time, but that was really nice. I really, we both me and my husband really liked that because one we made friends, <clears throat> but two the class were really really receptive to us and our experience and what we've been through. And the rest of the um, adopters really, you know, asked us a lot of questions um, and really, really tried to learn, really. Um, and that's why I'm doing these videos, because we love to share it. We felt we, felt we helped them a lot. Um, and I think we did help them a lot because we're still friends with them. So some of the topics um, that they talk about is what a child needs. And um, so like the building blocks, <clears throat> trauma attachment, um, type of, of abuse um, children can encounter, child protection, the brain development and the effects of trauma on the, on the brain development, um, a secure base and uh, loss and, and grief for the, for the children as well. And there's also um, a section um, for fostering to adopt as well um, that covers that. Um, we got ours in handouts as well and um, rec uh, hard copies we got the first time around, but I know recently, the second time around, um, they gave us them electronically. And um, I've kept all of mine and I think they're really helpful to refer back to and help you. And, that, and you know, just to refresh your memory, even now, even down our six years um, for our journey, I get them out and occasionally and they really help me to just refocus, refresh, and go, oh yeah, I remember that now. Um, so also, um, my job as well, um, my day job, <clears throat> is um, I'm a district nurse for the NHS. So, um, oh, years back, oh, about over 20 years ago now, um, I did my training and we did child development and things like that. And we did child protection. I mean, even in my current job now, we do, you know, we do child protection, the type of abuse, you know, and the indicators to look for. And I felt for myself um, that was a really good grounding for me. Um, and when we did our PAR report, um, I, I spoke a lot about my work experiences and what I learned and how I felt I could transfer the that knowledge and skills over to that. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed, I thoroughly enjoyed the um, preparation classes. So don't, 
don't be put off at all. My husband was really apprehensive. He felt like there was forcing him to go. Um, he felt like, why should we go there? Because no other parents who have their children naturally um, have to go to preparation classes. Um, but he did get a lot out of these classes. He was a typical on the day one looking and saying, I don't want to be here, I've got my arms folded, oh, I don't really want to ask any questions and stuff like that. But by the third day, he was interacting with people, asking his own questions, thinking about things, you know, making friends and stuff. Um, and the second time we went for preparation classes, he, he opened up a lot. So don't, don't be put off. Um, so I think when you get to do your PAR report, and again, I'll talk about that, um, the social workers are also there just for observations to watch you to see how you are in the class, um, if you ask any questions, how you get on with the others, um, and what they felt you learned from that. And part of the PAR, PAR, PAR report, I'll go into more detail as well, they ask you what, what you felt you, you, you've gained and took from the preparation classes. So go with an open mind and just enjoy yourself and just relax uh, and, and just, you know, absorb it really. Um, so, so that's at stage one. Um, so, oh, I've lost my own thoughts now. So within um, within stage one, the social visit, social worker um, arranges home visits with you, um, and they um, they're to prepare you for the PAR report, which is the prospective adopters report. And that's what you'll take to panel to be approved adopters. So I'm not going to go into it. Um, big details here because I want to do a video um, and, and um, I've actually got a handout on when our local authority prepared us for the PAR report and um, they gave us a handout so I wanted to share that with you and talk about that in detail. Um, also part of the adoption process we had um, home assessments so just want to make sure the home you know you've just prepared yourself in your home really for the child and, and they're going to be safe um, and <laughs> that's our social worker, we get on really well with him. We've known him a lot of years because we had him in our first experience and our second experience. So we get on really well with him. <laughs> he was uh, he was very thorough assessing our garden and our house. Um, and we uh, at the time we had some vertical blinds, so he insisted <clears throat> we get some things to pin pin you know the, the loops on the vertical blinds, pin them back. And he also um, made us get us um, a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket. <clears throat> um, but those are things you do. Um, didn't always agree with some suggestions, but you know, we willingly, happily did it <laughs> to prepare ourselves. <laughs> oh, I know I shouldn't laugh, but yeah, just thinking about it now makes me still laugh. So part of it as well. Um, so that will go on through stage one and, and stage two. Um, these, there's a police check as well. Um, again, just to make sure you haven't got any major criminal 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 convictions or anything against um, children. So um, that was fine for both of us. I think from what I remember, that took quite a while to come back the first time, or, or the first time it felt like it took a long while to come back. The second time didn't didn't feel, feel like it didn't take that long the second time. But maybe that's my memory playing playing me up. Um, we had to go for a medical check as well, just to make sure, oh, my nose is itchy, I'm so sorry, um, just to make sure we were fit and healthy, we were looking after ourselves, because obviously they don't want um, to um, have a child that goes through the um, the experience of of being upskilled from a foster carer as they move into you, if you're obviously going to um, be really poorly and end up with a long-term condition or um, anything like that really that could affect the care um, that you give the child and also affect the um, consistency, consistency and stability for the child as well. Um, so yeah, so I think from what I remember the first time round, um, social services was going to do those medical check for us, but me being me because I'm in the NHS and I knew our GPs quite well, um, I took my forms um, to my GP and asked them to uh, ask them to book me some appointments and told them what it was for 
showed him my, my, my forms, left my forms with them um, and we were really lucky because the first time and, and I don't think we had a medical the second time, again that's my memory playing up, um, our, our, um, our GP was very 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 supportive of our adoption and, and journey and they did medical checks for both me and my husband, filled out the forms and they were absolutely terrific. So we managed to get our medical side of it um, done quite quickly and get that pushed through the system quite quickly. Um, do your financial checks as well. Again, this was something my husband um, didn't cope, I think I said didn't cope with, just obviously didn't agree with it. Um, but we did understand that, again, the social workers just need to make sure, you know, you are financially stable and um, you've not got lots and lots and lots of debt and you can't afford, afford to live and you can't afford to provide the, um, the, you know, the necessities for a child as well. So, yeah, we did that. Um, I think I was just like, looking at bank statements and wanted to know what, what debts we had. Um, what savings we had, um, any investments, pensions, um, that type of stuff um, for both of us. So you had to do a separate one for both of us. Um, then they do, um, you've got to give them the names of three referees. So one's a family member and one has to be a family member. Um, they'll get in contact with them. Um, they'll uh, meet up. I think they do an interview with them. And again, from what I remember the first time round, they our referees um, wrote a letter for evidence but the second time around and uh, it was the same time, same referees um, I think they just provided um, verbal, verbal accounts and also further along in the other stages after the child moves in with you as well um, our social worker comes, kept contacting our referees just to find out how they felt we were coping with the with the child, our girls, and how they thought we were um, interacting and things like that. Um, so um, the referees, what do they ask our referees? Um, so they're asking us obviously about us, our personalities, um, what their thoughts were on us as a couple and our relationships, our relationship, I'm sorry, if they felt we were stable, if they felt um, what, what they thought of us as, as parents. Um, so um, one of our referees was m um, my mother-in-law. So yeah, she, she gave me a really good account, of she would. And then we had another referee, which was my husband's very close friend. Then we had another referee who was my very close friend. Um, so yeah, and then our friends had children. So there was a lot of talk about how we got on with their children, how we interacted with them and stuff like that. Um, uh, I think one of the one of the questions I think they asked um, my husband's mother was um, oh God, I can't remember how can I rephrase this I think they asked us like about if they thought Richard had ever been violent to me or something you know so sometimes they can ask some really random questions but we obviously understood through the process that that's their job and they have to make sure we're, we're good candidates for the children, really. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, <clears throat> just because we had a bit of a laugh, really, over it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they ask our referees about the considerations of any potential child that, that moves in with us. So I think that goes into stage two as well, and some of these checks go into stage two as well. So, um... So at the end of stage two, you should have a completed PAR report, um, you should have had your medicals, your CBR checks in, your referee, referee, referees are in, and you can do the considerations of your child as well. Um, and then um, you're ready to apply for a date to attend panel. Again, I won't go into a lot of details about the panel today. I will do a video about the experiences of both our panels because the first panel um, to be a was for us to be approved adopters. The second panel we went to was for us to be approved foster carers so we could foster to adopt. So we are both dual, dual registered. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so um, your 10 panel with your social worker and your PAR report, they asked you questions based on your, on your report. Um, and the last one we went to, 
and um, that was really good because they looked at our report then they came out and told us what the list of questions they were going to ask so you're not um, shocked by anything and you can prepare yourself you go in yes the list of questions that they're going to tell you to and like this is going to ask you ask your social worker anything and then your social worker stays in so and um, they can have their, their talk with the social worker social worker comes out and they deliberate and then they come out and tell us um, the verdict and then that then that will go off to um um an independent and i don't call them independent verifiers but that's what it is just for somebody to um kind of make sure that the panel's made the right decision just to give it that seal of approval really um but once you get to panel um in our minds is if the social workers have done really good jobs with all the checks with your power report and stuff then there shouldn't be any surprises at that panel um, and it should really be uh, a matter of course just to double check that the social workers um, have made the right decision for for recommending you so then um, then stage three is once you're um, approved adopters, you can start looking and uh, looking for your child. Oh, um, <clears throat> so um, you have to look for your child within the, the agency or local authority you are in, I think within the first three months. Then after that, you're able to um, look further afield. I can't remember off the top of my head the types of things we looked at. There's there some specific web websites um, that can go and have a look as well. Um, both our children actually were children through our local authority. Um, <clears throat> to, oh yeah, ten link groups, and they didn't call them link groups um, when we first started. I can't remember what they called them, but yeah, um, if you've got an opportunity to attend link groups and um, to meet some children as well. Um, although, sorry, correct myself. The first time the children were there. Um, this time, I think they do it so it's just the social workers and the, ch and the child's um, profiles because we've got some really close friends that have um, just gone through the adoption process um, and they, that's what they've said in their local authority, which is different different to ours. They had link groups and social workers there with the children's um, profiles. Um, well, not for everybody, but um, we went and um, we like we well the first ones we went to that we went the link groups the children were there we didn't like we didn't like that the children there but the other ones we've gone to where it was just the social workers and the child and the child's profiles we really liked them we got a lot out of them um because you get to meet the social worker of the child and you don't you're not just reading a flat piece of paper you can actually feel like you can get um what's going on here? you actually feel they can get to know the child through the social worker um, and then you can be, um, if, if you find a child that you think you'd like to be linked with, then you can express your interest on that. Um, if the uh, um, social workers think it's a good link, they will link you to the child um, and then you can attend a matching panel and you've got to wait for your matching panel day. Um, again, with both our children, um, we were the social workers felt at the time we were the strongest couple for both our girls um, so we didn't have to worry about if it was up against any other couple couples that that was identified as a link for, for, the, for the children um, and so we went to matching panel and again I don't want to get too much into the match, matching panel so I will do a video on our experiences on both our matching panels um, Cause the first matching panel we went to, I think the first time we we dot the first one we did the first matching panel we went to, um, it was a few years back. So we wasn't allowed to see um, our daughter before we got matched with her. So we went to a matching panel just, um, without meeting her, and the second time, the second experience, we were obviously foster to adopt. So we took our second daughter with us to the matching panel. So it was just, oh, it was just a lovely, lovely experience. Not for her, because um, it was my child with day and she was hungry. So I missed some sandwiches to take. And she sat there at the matching panel eating her sandwiches. Um, so it gave her the matching panel a bit of a giggle. 
but you know it needs must when you're sitting there and um, you've got to entertain a, a hungry child so but I'll, I said I'll do a video and go in a lot lot more depth about the matching panels but both of our matching panels and both of our um, approval panels was was really good experiences really good experiences for us and we really enjoyed them um um oh yeah to share a little bit the first the first ever the first time around the first ever link panel we went to which booked a holiday oh ages and ages before we was doing the adoption process and then our link date link and panel not approval panel came up the first time and um, it was in the middle of our holiday and obviously I don't want to um, cancel our holiday and um, because <laughs> we had it booked and it was meeting family and stuff and didn't want to disappoint family so our social worker th um, came up with he was going to um, Skype our, um, our adoption panel so for our local authority we were the first ever couple um, to get to be approved adopters um, via Skype we were um, actually in Turkey at the time um, but yeah so don't don't worry about the um, adoption approval and matching panels and trust we did tr tr trust your social worker because they will prepare you really well and if we can be um, if we can you know be approved adopters via Skype um, and was it in the same country then you know don't worry at all so once your match has been approved, um, then you can um, meet for, for the adoption. Um, for based on that experience, um, for the adoption, you can be matched with with, with your child, and, and I believe that is still the case. And obviously, for foster to adopt, um, the child moves in with you before that, so you get matched with the child who's been living with you for a while. And the social workers who will help help you and, and, the, and the foster carers will help you and the plan the transition for your child depending on the child's age and the child's needs it could be from um, a week up to two weeks um, so just I we just trust the, so, uh, the foster carers really um, we built up in both cases we built really good um, relationships very quickly with the foster carers um, and to this day we're still in touch with both the foster carers we didn't have any problems with our transitions with both our daughters with all the really the thanks was to the foster carers for not only preparing the child but preparing us really as well for it um, and uh, what I'll perhaps do because we've had two two different um, transitions transitions um, I will again do a video just to share it more in depth about um, our experiences with uh, with that um you know it just felt a bit strange um both both times it felt strange being in somebody's house can't, taking it over really and um, to get why you get to know your child and their routine and things like that um but you've just got to you know just think of the end goal really and it's so 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 worth it getting to know that child and, and their routine um yeah no, I just can't, I can't really speak highly enough of our foster carers in both our cases. I really can't. They're, they really are our firm friends now. Well, I say firm friends, they're more like family, really. They are more like family. Um, so we go out with them on trips, we come around here for barbecues and stuff. You know, they just can't. Well, yeah, the foster carers do an absolutely brilliant job. So that's stage three. And stage four, a child obviously be, with, be living with you. Um, and once they've been living with you for at least 10 weeks, you can apply for your adoption court order. So when the child first moves in with you, whether it's adoption um, or foster to adopt, social workers um, come around once a week for four weeks. And I think on the initial, um, on the initial moving in, um, I think they have to come within 24, 48 hours um, to make sure the child is settled it's once a week for a month then it's four weeks and then when it gets towards the end it goes to once every six weeks or they're tailored to to your needs really if you need them to come um, more often for support then that they will do that so uh, um so after 10 weeks the things are going really fine the child settled then you can apply for your adoption court order um 
<clears throat> and then obviously once you've got your date, um, um, you can go to the um, adoption, uh, well you don't, you, you don't go, but then um, social workers go to the, um, um, I can't remember the terminology now, my brain's gone, I've had a long day with the kids, my brain's gone, I'm so sorry. Um, you go, um, social workers go, the judge reviews the case, um, and then you um, illegally adopt your child. And then after that, you can apply for your celebration um, court hearing. Um, so I hope I haven't gone on too long. Um, it's basically a quick overview of the adoption process and the four stages. Um, if you're still with me listening, thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, I promise I will um, shoot and upload those videos I've promised you. Um, so um, if you like my videos, please subscribe, please join the family, and um, please give me a little thumbs up, please comment down below or on my Instagram page to let me know um, how I'm doing, what you think, what you want me to share. Um, I'm just so, so, so um, happy and grateful for everybody who is following me, so thank you very much. Um, and all the support um, that I've got and all the positive comments I've got. I'm just so pleased. Um, I'm just really, really so pleased because um, I do feel really passionate about sharing our experiences and, and supporting people for, for their journeys. Um, we've, we've had ups and downs, um, but overall, our, both our experiences have been so, so positive. So let me know what you think. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to... Um, uh, message me and I will get back to you and um, so thank you very much